Hello Saints, peace and grace in Christ Jesus be with all of you. Today's video is specifically for the new Christian, which is also known as the uh, babe in Christ. However, if your experience is anything like mine, I was added uh, to the body of Christ at a very young age, but it wasn't until later on in life where I was blessed with the knowledge of right division and dispensational understanding so I spent over three decades uh, three decades over 30 years I remained a babe in Christ I just wasn't growing and uh, you know I knew something was horribly wrong and the answer to my prayers came when God revealed to me the knowledge of right division and also knowledge of what dispensations are and how important it truly is now as soon as I understood what dispensation was and how it works according to God's des his design and his word within a few years maybe less I was no longer a babe in Christ but I became a mature adult in Christ and it came from knowing God's word more specifically it came from understanding how God has been dealing with mankind for the past 6,000 years. It's as if the light bulb suddenly came on, the switch was turned on, and it all clicked. Suddenly, God's Word all made sense to me. Everything that used to confuse me was no longer uh, confusing. So the question is, what should a new Christian do first? What books of the Bible should you read first? What studies should you concentrate on when starting out? Also, if you've, you know, you've always been confused or for some reason you're unable to understand the Bible, like something is missing or you're confused over God's word or why there seems to be some contradictions in his word at times, then this study is also for you. Even if you've been in Christ Jesus for many years and you've been lacking in spiritual growth and you, for some reason you, you can't figure it out why this is going on then this study is for you and the first thing you must be using the King James Bible okay whether you buy one or perhaps you're using an online version of the the KJ uh, please understand that it's very important to use the King James Version Bible only for your studies. Now, I can do an entire study on the reasons why you must use a King James Version Bible uh, over the other ones. Okay, that, that is a complete study on its own, and we can't go into all the details here. So, but in fact, if you're looking for a, uh, a good place to buy a King James Version Bible, take a look inside the description box below. Uh, scroll down a bit, a bit, and you'll see a link that I've put there uh, in a place where they sell King James Version Bibles for a very good price and the quality is also very good so if you're looking for one then scroll down take a look at that place okay so moving along with the study also before anything you must learn how the Bible is written how God divides the Bible according to certain time periods for certain people and to certain people how God dealt with people during specific time periods is called dispensations. It's just another word for administrations or his program or what method God was using during each time, okay, each time period, those dispensations. Now, there are seven dispensations, and today we fall under the dispensation of grace, that which is the sixth dispensation. Understanding how dispensations works uh, is truly the key to unlocking your Bible so so that it makes logical sense okay and, and it overcomes confusions and what seems to be contradictions at the time if you look at the videos I've uploaded on my channel you'll find uh, videos on the seven dispensations and I strongly suggest you take a look at that study on dispensations uh, that I did a while back it's extremely critical you understand that I cannot stress enough how important it is for a new Christian to first understand dispensations and right division before starting to take on studies in God's Word. Once you have a good grasp on what dispensations are, 
then you're ready to start studying. And I suggest you begin with the book of Romans. Romans is the most basic of Paul's books, okay, that he writes to and for us today in the dispensation of grace. You'll notice that chapters 1 through 5 tells us how to be saved. Chapters 6 through 8 gives you a basic outline of how a Christian life should operate today. Chapters 9 through 11 uh, orients you so that you can see some of the differences between prophecy and mystery. Okay, that is the nation of Israel's past, present, future statuses and how we are not related to Israel. In chapters 12 through 16, there's an instruction to you as how to apply the grace doctrines to specific life issues. No matter where you are in life, Romans is the, the most practical Bible book. It's the foundational book of Paul's epistles. Now try to concentrate on Romans before you venture out to other uh, books in the Bible. The Bible is a big book. So you must start out with basics. Uh, Romans is the most basic book regarding God's current dealings with you and me in this day and age. Now on a side note, we know Paul wrote 13 books. We know Paul's books are for us, the body of Christ. For today, Paul's books are all about the dispensation of grace, salvation by faith alone. But what about all the other books? This is why it's so important to understand dispensations. Every other book besides Paul's are all about the nation of Israel, God's plan for Israel, all about Israel's past, present, and future. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, known again as the four Gospels, uh, we see how God sends Israel their Messiah, the Messiah prophesied all throughout the Old Testament. All the prophets forecasted that one day their king would come, that he would come to establish reign on earth, making Israel a nation of priests and rulers. And God the Father fulfills his promise. He comes in the flesh. The Messiah and the King Jesus Christ is born of a virgin. Everything he does is a play by play of what the prophets in the Old Testament prophesied long ago that would happen but something else happened Israel couldn't see it they rejected Jesus they refused to believe that Jesus was the prophesied Messiah and they ended up killing him now this is where uh, things change drastically okay regarding the program or dispensation for the nation of Israel our Lord God in his infinite wisdom had a secret plan a plan that he created from the very foundation of creation this is known as the mystery gospel Paul's gospel our gospel the gospel of grace simply the mystery gospel that God kept a secret and later revealed it to Paul only after Israel denied and killed Jesus then God's plan was built it was to build unto himself a body which is the body of Christ that's us now, making this body also a body of fellow heirs with his son, calling everyone in the body sons, sons of God. And this includes men, women, and children. Uh, we're no longer servants, but we're actually sons adopted by grace through faith. This is the simple definition of Paul's gospel. Nowhere in the Old Testament, the four gospels, the last books of the Bible, including Revelation, is the body of Christ mentioned. It's extremely important you understand that. That's because God chose Paul. Paul was and is our apostle for today. Again, his 13 books are all about the church today, all about the body of Christ. It's for and to us today. It's extremely important to understand that there's a difference between the prophecies and the mystery. The prophecies spoken of in the Old Testament and the four Gospels, along with the last books, the latter books of the Bible, are prophecies being for the nation of Israel. And the mystery that Paul speaks of, that was revealed to him by Jesus Christ, 
is solely for the church today. There's a difference in the two. This is what Dispensations explains, why there's a difference, how it works, and how it will all end. Very important stuff to learn and understand. Now summing it all up, the Old Testament, the four Gospels, and the last books of the Bible, the books of Peter, John, James, Jude, Revelation, are all about the coming King, the Messiah, Daniel's 70th week, Israel's reigning and ruling Messiah, and you'll notice a pattern in these books. The first thing you, that is mentioned is the day of the Lord. Now, Daniel's, uh, which is Daniel's 70th week, the tribulation period, Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period, as we call it, okay, which is soon to come. Then we see the second coming of Jesus Christ, how he establishes the earthly kingdom promised to the Jews, what takes place, and how he removes the wicked and gathers all the believers. And then... He establishes a period of reign for 1,000 years, which is known as the millennium, a 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ where he's ruling and reigning with the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, when you understand dispensations, you'll then understand that the earthly kingdom is also called the kingdom of heaven. And this can be confusing because you would assume that when you say uh, the kingdom of the earthly or the earthly kingdom is the earth and then when you hear the kingdom of heaven that must be in heaven but that's not the case through study and understanding dispensations you'll understand that the earthly kingdom and the kingdom of heaven are the same thing now here's the part that you need to understand the kingdom of heaven is always where Jesus Christ is okay so when he comes to the earth to set up his rule and reign he brings the kingdom of heaven upon the earth, which is then the earthly kingdom, which is promised to the Jews. Okay, this is their program's all about the earthly the kingdom. Now, this is God's covenant made with the seed of Jacob. Okay, the fulfilling of the prophe the prophecies. Now, the second thing you'll notice is the body of Christ, where we fit in, how we're promised the heavenly uh, kingdom. Okay, it's not the kingdom of heaven but we're promised the heavenly kingdom. The body of Christ will ruin and reign in Christ Jesus from heaven over all the principalities, powers, and dominions, the heavenly government. And if you remember, Satan and a third of the angels were booted out of heaven. Uh, they, they lose all their positions that they have, and there's a vacuum created, okay? This is our vacuum to fill. The body of Christ will fill the empty spaces created by the fallen angels will be placed as Christ and his ambassadors will be ruling and reigning in Christ from heaven over heaven and under heaven. This will take place when the rapture happens. First, after the rapture will be brought to what's known as the judgment seat of Christ where some of us will receive rewards, others will lose rewards or positions that they could have had. You know, if only they would have did more while they had a chance on earth and when they had the opportunity to do those things, but they didn't, others did take advantage of their Christian life on earth and they will receive greater responsibilities. Some, some people in the body of Christ will receive greater positions and greater responsibilities while others will uh, receive less. But keep in mind that the least of all people in heaven is greater than the greater the greatest person on the earth even greater than John the Baptist it's said that having one foot in heaven is greater than owning the entire world the least in heaven will be blessed beyond measure so we see two plans here one is the earthly program for the nation of Israel and the other is the heavenly program for the body of Christ now in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth two programs the first was kept secret, a, a secret mystery until Paul comes around. Uh, the other is mentioned all throughout the Bible by prophecies, by the prophets for the seed of Jacob. The only way you'll understand all of this is if you take time to understand dispensations and right division. It's very important you take the time to understand both of these things before attempting to make sense of God's word. Paul tells Timothy in writing to him the importance of this in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself, uh, thyself approved unto God, 
a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul here is telling Timothy to rightly divide the word of truth. The word of truth is God's word, the Bible, from the beginning to the end. Paul tells Timothy to keep things in order and perspective, to place emphasis on the divisions in Scripture, keeping the programs distinct, the plans for the nation of Israel and the plan uh, for the body of Christ, two programs for two groups. So number one, again, <clears throat> make sure you have a King James Version Bible. Second is learn and understand dispensations and right division. Third, start with the book of Romans. Fourth, concentrate your studies on Paul's 13 books, which are Romans through Philemon. Now, when I say study and focus on Paul's 13 books, here's what I mean. You should spend at least a year, give it 12 months, studying these 13 books. A full year with Paul's books alone and nothing else. Now, of course, this depends on how often you study, but assuming you study one book per week, at the end of the year, you should have gone through that one book at least four times, okay, with uh, in-depth analysis of what Paul's message is. These books are for us, saints. It's, it's our program for today. That's why it's so important to understand. Many times, and I've done this in the past my, myself, people get caught up with the books that have nothing to do with us today. They get frustrated and stuck in Israel's program trying to make sense of it when it doesn't make sense for the body of Christ because it has nothing to do with the body of Christ. Now please understand, the entire Bible is written for us and we need to read the entire Bible because we need to learn from even Israel's program. There's a lot to learn all throughout from Genesis to Revelation. but. At the beginning, at the start, you need to learn and study first what pertains to you for today. You must fully understand our gospel, Paul's gospel for the body of Christ, before you go off studying programs meant for other people and not for us today. This is going to keep you from getting confused and falling into all the traps out there, traps set before you. You know, the false teachings and all the garbage the enemy puts before us. You need to understand our gospel for today before you venture off into something in someone else's business. You'll notice a common thread with false teaching. They don't rightly divide and they don't understand dispensations. They mix the two programs, making Israel and the body of Christ one entity and this causes all kinds of problems. So to avoid those problems, you need to learn how to rightly divide, learn all about dispensations, and uh, you can look at my videos on the seven dispensations. Start there at, at, at the least. Start with learning dispensations first before you move on. Another important consideration is to find a teacher and stick to that one teacher all the way through Paul's 13 books. Now what do I mean by this? I mean don't jump around from one teacher to another and another and another because you'll just get confused. Especially when one teacher's style of teaching and understanding is different than the rest. This is going to confuse you. So find a good teacher. Make sure you test the spirits first. Make sure they know uh, what they're talking about test them test them and test them again and if they pass the test then stick to them and like I said stick with uh, them all throughout the books of Paul if you want a list of good teachers just send me a message or leave a comment and I'll get you a list of what I think are some good teachers out there that I've studied under and learned a lot from and I've already vetted them I've, st I've tested their spirit I've watched and listened closely to everything they've said, so I've done some of the work for you, and it could save you some time. And you know, that's the precious time that you could be using to get started with your studies. Now, one teacher that I'm going to mention here and now is Ron Knight. Ron, R O N, his last name, K N I G H T, and from his ministry out west called NorCal Grace. It's uh, an acronym for Northern California Grace, but it's all one word. Nor, N-O-R, Cal, C-A-L, 
and Grace, G-R-A-C-E. One word, NorCal Grace. And he's on YouTube and he knows his stuff. Just be ready to take notes. Be ready to study hard with your Bible open and make sure you follow along verse by verse with Ron as he teaches. And the very first video that I, I want to uh, recommend that you watch after this one is called The Key to Understanding the Bible by Ron Knight, his YouTube channel, NorCal Grace. This particular video has great meaning to me. In fact, it's this video that I was led to over three years ago that changed my entire life and understanding, specifically changed everything about what I knew, what I thought I knew about God's Word, and it changed it for all the better. Now, I'll say this. If you spend one year, just one year studying under Brother Ron, you'll be in the top 1% in regards to Bible knowledge, especially understanding the body of Christ and Paul's ministry to and for us today. The guy knows his stuff. That's obvious because God has gifted him with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now, with that said, let me also say that you can spend your entire life trying to find a perfect teacher or preacher out there. Now, let me give you some advice right now. You won't find one. Not one teacher on this planet is perfect in all ways. Man is flawed, okay? We all have our shortcomings. We all think differently. We're all still living in the flesh and no one's perfect. The only perfect teacher that's ever stood foot on this planet is Jesus Christ himself. He's the only one. Now I promise you, I can find at least one thing wrong with every teacher out there today. Whether it's their teaching or something else, I'll find at least something that's questionable about everyone except for Jesus Christ. So keep that in mind. Even if I recommend teachers to you, just keep in mind that there's a high probability that you might find some small thing they say as being questionable, okay? And it's it's not just them. That goes for each and every teacher out there right now. We're all fallen beings with, with fallen brains. With limited knowledge, we have faults. If you keep jumping from one teacher to another, every time they say something uh, you know you don't agree with, you'll be spending your entire lifetime jumping from one person to the next and you'll never ever get to the point where you understand God's Word. Using myself as an example, I've learned so much from Ron Knight. I agree with about 99% of everything he teaches but there's that 1% that I question and that's normal. It's okay. But to find someone that teaches 99% is very rare. Extremely rare. That, that makes him in the top 1% of the best teachers out there. So, my advice, find a good teacher. Stick to that one teacher for a year, learning and studying Paul's 13 books for an entire year, and you'll no longer be a babe in Christ, I promise you. You'll become a mature adult in Christ, and you'll be able to teach others knowing that everything you say is in full agreement with God's Word. Let me say also a special note on the book of Acts. You will not, let me say again, you will not understand the book of Acts if you don't first understand dispensations and write the vision. The book of Acts is a transitional book. It's the actions that took place during a transition, uh, the transition, hence the name Acts. It shows us how God transitioned from his program with Israel over to a new program, the mystery program revealed to Paul. At the beginning of Acts, we see uh, the gospel of the kingdom, the teachings of Peter and the other disciples. It's still the gospel of faith plus works. Then, as it transitions along through Acts, we see a change taking place. Suddenly, Paul is converted, and God reveals to Paul a new program or dispensation a new gospel to build the body of Christ the program for Israel ends with the death of Stephen and the new program of grace begins with Paul's conversion so my recommendation is first start out with the books of Paul alone Romans through Philemon and after you've spent a year studying those books then go back to Acts 
and you'll see clearly how Axe records the transition as I mentioned. Then from there you can move into the other books, the four Gospels. I, I Understanding the difference between dispensations will be your key to understanding God's Word. You know, hindsight is 2020, and a year from now, you'll look back and say, wow, now it all makes sense. Now it's easy to understand. Now I can see everything so clearly, you know. Now in closing, keep this in mind. When studying God's Word, you need to answer the who, the what, the when, the where, how, why. Those types of questions in order to understand what's taking place in Scripture. And, you know, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. We see that in 2 Timothy 3.16. All the entire Bible is God's Word. So we study all 66 books of the King James Version Bible. Genesis to Revelation. But unlike most churches and professing Christians, we study that entire Bible according to the revelation of the mystery for the body of Christ. In light of Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. That's why it's, an, it's extremely important you understand the body of Christ's gospel, uh, the gospel of grace, Paul's gospel, his books, Romans through Philemon. You have to understand, you have to make those things your foundation, okay? Uh, of course, Jesus Christ is your foundation. Your salvation in Christ is your foundation. But the first thing you put on that foundation would be Paul's gospels uh, through of Romans through Philemon, uh, not Paul's Gospels, I'm sorry, Paul's books of Romans through Philemon, okay? That is the first thing you need to add on top of the foundation of Jesus Christ that you have as a Christian. Now, when studying, you know, particular Bible passages, you first need to establish the following in this order. Again, as I mentioned it, who is writing? Uh, who are they speaking to? Who are they writing to? Uh, what are they writing about? Why are they writing it? How are they writing? All these things. You know, keep in mind that Paul's epistles of Romans through Philemon are what God has to say to you, to us, the body of Christ today. And the rest of the Bible deals with another program. It's what God had to say to the nation of Israel. Not us, not today, not for us today. It, it's completely different. And you'll understand that when you understand dispensations. If Paul does not instruct you to do it then God does not expect you to practice it in your life today now I hope this helps everyone out there or anyone out there who may have just recently been added to the body of Christ or perhaps you're like me you spent your entire life learning and studying all the wrong things being confused and you're tired of being confused and you finally want to get serious learning God's Word then please take the advice that I give you in this video and follow it You'll look back a year from now and be very grateful that you chose to follow what, I was, what I'm recommending right now. Thank you for studying with me, saints. Peace, love, and grace in Christ Jesus be with all of you. And I'll see you on the next video, Lord willing.